Hello and welcome back to AMBV. I'm Casper and today we're doing a quick update on the Datsun 280Z Daily Driver Project. So I've made a lot of improvements to the 280Z Daily Driver Project in the last couple weeks. I finally got in the parts to do maintenance other than the first round. So in the first round we did spark plugs, wires, cap and rotor. We went ahead and did engine oil, transmission fluid, differential fluid. We also went ahead and lubed up all of the ball joints and bearings that we came across. That told us also that there were a lot of ball joints that needed to be dealt with. So I went ahead and got in Moog lower ball joints, Moog tie rod ends. We got in some KYB replacement shocks because the shocks were obviously haggard and needed a replacement. And we got in a few other odds and ends. So now the car has a lot better odds of surviving this winter. And I also finally got in the new wheels and tires. So these are Anki replica style wheels. They look like the older Wantanabis kind of modernized with Continental Extreme Contact DWS tires. These are some of the best wet weather tires that I know of. So I went with those on this car again as I'll be driving it through the winter. And the wheels allowed me to actually size them properly. The factory wheels on the 280Z are 14 inch wheels and these let me move up to 16 so that I can find 16 inch tires which are far more common. Along with those basic upgrades, with the tie rod ends and the ball joints, that allowed me to dial in and tighten up the front end a lot more, as well as take the time to do stainless brake lines throughout. So the stainless braided brake lines, normally on a daily driver project, I would steer away from because the clear coating on them tends to break down faster than just a factory or a good quality aftermarket rubberized brake line. In this case, the price point on the stainless steel braided lines was actually about the same or cheaper than some of the aftermarket rubber lines. And for the way they mount to the wheels on this, I actually think that it might last a little longer. So we're going to give them a try. And these are actual name brand Russells, so they might actually uh, be a little better quality than what I'm typically used to. While we were in there, I found that the rear drum brakes actually had been semi-functional. One was completely leaking fluid. The other one seemed to have been stuck and so it wasn't fully engaging. While I was at it, I went ahead and ran down to the parts store, grabbed some new wheel cylinders and replaced those while I was doing the rear shocks. So now the rear end has the same KYB shocks, stainless braided brake lines, and has new wheel cylinders inside the drums. I left the rest of the drum hardware alone. In the front, I actually went ahead and went with Hawk Street pads and some better rotors, but in the rear I figured the drums had enough material on them and I wasn't going to be improving the performance of basic drums much by changing out new contact material. The engine itself is basically the same except for I got in new pigtails to adapt for the thermostat on the engine and the I believe it goes to the secondary thermostat control unit um, in order to, to do away with some seriously corroded and broken lines. That should help the signal and it certainly runs a lot better now with the new sensor and new wire combo. I also found a couple small fuel leaks that I fixed. So all in all, everything has been mostly maintenance related in the engine bay. In the near future, I will do a few performance upgrades because the exhaust system on this is pretty corroded and seems to be somewhat plugged up. Maybe the muffler's failing or maybe something tried to live inside the muffler. I'm not really sure, but I'm going to go ahead and do away with the exhaust system because the way it also is rot rotted and fused in place makes it very difficult to service. So I will probably look at doing either a really nice stainless system or uh, at least um, do some ceramic coated headers and things back. So look for that in the near future. So that's about all I have for this update on the car for right now. Stay tuned, we'll have a lot more videos on this car as I go into winter and start doing a lot more upgrades to make it more friendly as a daily driver. Thank you for watching this video and as always, I'll see you in the next one.